there's some things in my past I'm not a proud of. There's some things in the past that I don't want to bring up. But God covered me. He covered me when checks didn't want to clear in time. He covered me when I had an extra day to get to work. He covered me when I was supposed to be dead in a car accident. But now I'm okay. Aren't you glad that God covered you even in the midst of your foolishness? Sometimes we say that we don't have any idea what we put into motion with our mouths and with our heart that could have killed us, but God covers us, and I don't take His grace and His goodness for granted. Rejoice in his name. For God, you are righteous. And we give thanks to you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We hear and we are glad. The heavens proclaim your righteousness and your handiwork. And we bless your name this morning because you're worthy to be. Come on and bless the Lord and give his name the glory. Come on and bless him right now. We're thankful to God for this second Sunday in heaven. Uh, we're going to have a lighting of our, uh, we're going to have a song. We have a lighting of our Advent candles, and then we'll hear our prayer. And we thank God for uh, all those who are participating in worship today. Uh, Sister Renee uh, Beasley is going to be doing that Advent candle, and we have uh, Reverend Dr. Metis Chi, who's the former presiding elder, and we thank God for her presence as well. And we're just going to go ahead with service. Come on, let's do this right now.
of Advent, peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Matthew 5th chapter, verse 9. Are we peacemakers? This second Sunday of Advent, our theme is peace. Last week, we focused on hope and how we can be the incarnation of hope to those around us who are hurting. This week, as we turn to look at peace, we see one way we can bring hope into the world is to become peacemakers. Peace as a term is trendy at Christmas, but it often remains a cute phrase on a Christmas card. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. How often do we work to bring that peace on earth? Are we peacemakers in our families? Do we work to heal family strife or do we let our prejudices bring discord? Do we get upset with family or friends who don't celebrate the holiday for the right reason? Or do we work to build community with everyone? Peace on earth starts with us, with our rightful attitude towards others. Our words can convey an attitude that our hearts can create either a culture of peace or a culture of hate within our homes and congregations. Sometimes it is hard to tell which one is being promoted as our words can speak of peace and our action promotes discord. So, this holiday season, let us make the term peace on earth mean something. Let us become active peacemakers. As the season unfold around us, let the silent prayers of peace lie like stars in a clouded night. May we inspire the world with peace. May we attach it deep into our lives so that in every place of stress, frustration, or fear, we might feel the presence of peace easing our hearts and transforming our lives. May peace light the world this Christmas. Oh God, our help in ages past. I hope for years to come our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Father, we come to you this morning because you are almighty. We honor you because you're everlasting and loving. You're everything that we need. We come to you this morning confessing our sins which we may have committed by thought, word, or deed. For you have told us that if we confess our sins, you will be faithful and just to forgive our sins. Father, for that we say thank you. Lord, we thank you for last night's sleep. And thank you for waking us up this morning with a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you for giving us another opportunity to worship and praise you. For we are grateful for this season of Advent as we celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord, we are thoughtful. We are thankful that you have given us family and friends. We thank you for the roof over our heads and the bed to sleep in, food to eat, and medicine for those of us that have the need. We thank you, God, for being our comforter when we are in despair, being our healer, when we need healing, being our father when we are fatherless, being our friend when we are friendless. We thank you for our church, Solid Rock, who holds fast to do your will during this pandemic. We thank you for Pastor Curry as he continues to be the shepherd over this flock. We lift him and his family up to you and we ask that you will keep them during this pandemic. We lift up the sick and shut in in the Solid Rock congregation. We pray that you will be done, your will will be done. We lift up the officers and all members of Solid Rock and that your will will be done. Lord, we thank you for our children and youth that are in the public schools and the private schools and they're going through this with a new determination. And we thank you for those college students that have come home and we give your name praise and honor for them. We lift up the Hunter family who are mourning over the, the loss of Bishop Lewis Hunter Sr. We lift up Bishop Hines to you, Father, 
and ask that you keep her during this pandemic as she continues to do the assignment you have given her in spite of her illness. God, we thank you and praise your name for you are Alpha and Omega and we honor you. We lift up President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris, which have been voted on at a time such as this. We ask you, God, to surround them with your care and give them what they stand in need of. Give us a word of encouragement as Pastor preaches this morning. It is in the same of Jesus, the Christ, that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much uh, for uh, the Advent candle and the prayer. We thank God for all of you here this morning. Uh, Psalm 85. I want to turn your, direct, turn your attention to Psalm 85. And we're going to be reading verses 1 and 2. Then we're going to jump down to verses 8 through 13. It says, Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let's verse 8. Let me hear what the Lord God will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. I want to talk to you today from the subject constant peace. Constant peace. Somebody say, I want some constant peace. Constant peace. Peace. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and share a word with your people. God, open up our eyes that we may see. Open up our ears that we may hear. And open up our hearts that we may receive the wondrous works in your law. God, we ask today that God, your power comes through this microphone, through the screen. That God, whatever will go on will be of your nature and your presence. We know that there is no power in the pulpit unless there's prayer in the pew. So, God, I'm praying right now that, God, in those virtual pews, that, God, that there's someone praying for me. God, we give your name the thanks. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> the second Sunday of Advent is peace. How refreshing just to hear the word peace. We're wrapping up a highly tense political season while anticipating the coming of our king. So as tradition may serve in the United States, after all the votes have been tallied, there is a what is called a peaceful transfer of power. I don't know why they call it peaceful, because anytime you transfer power, it's painful. Ooh, I'm about to, y'all not ready for ready. So in order to transfer power, one entity must exert or give up power that the other does not have yet. Mm, maybe somebody in the back said, oh, Pastor, you went too fat. All right, let me run. Uh, so in, in Walmart uh, parking lot yesterday, uh, someone asked me, did I have jumper cables? And now for the first time in many years, I did not. Uh, God be the glory. Yeah, some of y'all hating on the pastor. Uh, for, so for 14 years, I drove the same car. Y'all remember, some of y'all don't go back that far. Uh, I drove the same car. No Bluetooth, no USB, no Cyrus XM radio, no heated seats. Uh, I didn't have any of the new technology uh, that we have today, but it served its purpose. And that was my primary and my only vehicle. 
It got me to church, it got me to work, got me to school, it got me shopping, picking up a child, you name it, it functioned. Now, because this vehicle was 14 years old, uh, I always had jumper cables in the trunk, always. Because uh, I've been in too many situations uh, with this car for 14 years uh, where the battery would just die. Now, some of y'all don't go back that far, y'all you know, just brand new. Uh, but uh, I, I, would have, I had no warning lights on the dashboard, uh, and it, 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 would have, it, it wouldn't give me any heads up. It would just, it just says, you know what, I'm just not going to move right now. I'm dead. I'm not going to move. Uh, anybody ever remember that happening to you? I know I got one or two right now. Uh, saying, Pastor, I touch and agree with you. I touch you. Oh, thank you. So having jumper cables saved me a few times from calling AAA. So once the car has been jumped, I can start the engine and my alternator will charge the battery when I drive. See, that, that's, that's how it works. So, uh, so and I, I looked at that and I, I realized that in order to transfer power, one entity must exert or give up power that the other one does not have yet. Oh, come on, I'm already waking you up this morning. So uh, if that is like the life of a believer in Christ, because we are dead to sin and God jump starts us and the Holy Spirit recharges us uh, when we want to move along. Oh, so we thank God for, for the Holy Spirit recharging us and God jump starting us in our life. I, you know, but this illustration is not perfect because in the many times, more times than I can count, my mechanic said this to me. Listen. The older the battery is and the older the car gets, the more likely you will need a jump. All right, I ain't like that news, y'all. <laughs> uh, and, and since, this is what the mechanic said, he said, since you have no indicators to tell you when you need to swap out your battery, you will have to take note of this date today when I put this new one in. Mm -hmm. This is the date that the battery was changed. All right, I lost something. Now, this helps me better because as I get older, I find the weight of the world, the pressures of the day, draining my battery. Mm. Anybody drained and need a jump this morning? I don't know about you, but I do. Uh, but thanks be to God that we have indicators. Help me, somebody, on our soul that says it's time for you to check in with God so he can charge you up. Woo, God help me, Chief. God, I need a charge because sometimes all this crazy stuff, this news cycle, everything going around is draining my battery. So God, charge me up. Oh, it's God in his infinite wisdom. When he gives us that charge, he gives us peace. Ooh, yes, he gives us peace. Because when we're drained, we don't have any peace. When we're depleted, we don't have peace. We're in chaos. We don't know which way to go. We're just, we're just existing. But when, when God gets a hold of you and charges you up, you have a quiet, a blessed quietness. You have a peace that's in your spirit. Oh, one philosopher said that if you are depressed, you're living in the past. If you are anxious, you're living in the future. And if you are at peace, you're living in the present. Uh, well, in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, some of you may find it difficult to find peace under these circumstances today. So 2020 has been tough. That's the past. Uh, the vaccine is on the way. That's the future. And right now, we are social distancing. That's the present. Uh, so the past, the yesterday was hard. Looking ahead causes anxiety. But we are, but in the present, I can have peace. I can have peace because I have God charging my soul. So this morning, this particular text, Psalm 85, gives us the jumper cables to keep us moving in peace. And the word of God says this, that if we keep our minds on him, oh, some of y'all already know what I'm about to say, uh, he will keep you in peace.
perfect peace. Who are you looking at, Pastor? I'm looking at nobody over there. God will keep you in perfect peace even when you have nobody up in the church except for angels shouting in glory. Oh, hallelujah. Now, some of y'all are wasting up. Uh, so, and right there in Isaiah chapter 26, God says these words. He says, you keep him in perfect peace. And I, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you and trusts in God for God is the everlasting rock. So the Hebrew phrase right there in that particular text when he says you keep your mind you keep your mind at peace if you stayed on him, stayed on means to brace or support, to hold up kind of like you trying to brace or support a beam. And that's what God says in a nutshell, those with minds fully braced and upheld, supported by the truth of the word of God God will keep in perfect peace. He'll keep in perfect peace. So Psalm 85 is a prophetic liturgy uh, anticipating a vision of the future when God's people turn to God and he answers their prayers. It, it, this particular song uh, anticipates a vision of the future when God's people turn to God and he answers them. Uh, it, it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, he's anticipating the future. Uh, it's a vision. It's a song that's supposed to be sung. So the author of this text suggests in no uncertain terms that largely peace is directly related to the actions and attitudes of the individuals. All right, watch this. Uh, so to be in constant peace depends on us. All right, yeah, Ooh, about to get tight. Uh, so the author gives us the formula to be in constant peace. The, the, the first thing uh, that he says is, uh, he says to God in this song, watch this, he said, I remember what you did. Mm. God help me. Uh, somebody said, I remember what you did. Uh, in other words, I remember how you brought me over. Or oh, how am I going to say constant peace? I got to remember what he did. Mm. Uh, so the current, uh, in that particular text, and the climate, uh, the current status of the land where they were living was now destroyed and was desolate. And what they built is now in ruins and the ruins only can display some of the glory. Mm. So where it was when it once was covered with flourishing cities and fruitful fields, it's now run down and barren. You know, sometimes even when I go back to my old neighborhood, I see it's run down and barren. So I only see the, the, the glimpse of glory, the glimpse of the Harlem Renaissance, the glimpse of when Bedford Stuyvesant was really shining and looking good. But 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 here's what the prophet saw. <sighs> because prophets don't see like other people uh, as something in the future that should happen. Watch this. But he sees this thing as already being done. All right. <laughs> he said, watch this. The writer says, you restored the fortunes of Jacob and you forgave their iniquity and pardoned all their sin. So if I could remember what you did, I could count on you doing it again. Mm. Woo ah, ah. So you blessed us before, I know you can bless us again. Ah, so my mind is not on what you are going to do, but my mind is what you already have done. Because if you already did it before, all I got to do is say thank you, God, because I already know you're about to do it. And since I believe in your past record, I'm fully persuaded that it's done. So I can have constant peace because I remember what you did. I remember how you covered me up. You covered me. Ooh, that's what he says. You pardoned me of my sins. The word pardon means covered. Mm. Uh, Adam and Eve tried to hide in the garden to cover up. Uh, remember Achan, Achan, he, he tried to hide the wedge of gold and tried to cover it up. David tried to hide how he set up to kill Uriah and tried to cover it up. And see, trying to cover up your mess will only lead to God exposing you. 
Ooh, I'm dropping nuggets this morning. But there's some things in my past I'm not a proud of. There's some things in the past that I don't want to bring up. But God covered me. He covered me when checks didn't want to clear in time. He covered me when I had an extra day to get to work. He covered me when I was supposed to be dead in a car accident. But now I'm okay. Aren't you glad that God covered you even in the midst of your foolishness? Sometimes we say that we don't have any idea what we put into motion with our mouths and with our heart that could have killed us. But God covers us and I don't take his grace and his goodness for granted. Oh, y'all see some folk playing with God. They're going to learn that God is an awesome God. He's a jealous God. He will have no one besides himself. Oh, he wants the glory. Oh, he wants the praise. Everything that comes out of our mouth should be to God be the glory. God, I give you thanks. Lord, I bless your name. It should be tacked on. Hallowed be your name. When I mention God, God is good. And hallowed be his name. His name is merciful. Hallowed be his name. His name is glorious. He covered me. That's huh, how I remember because I remember what you did. And I can I can have peace because he covered me before. Uh, so I won't make the same mistakes. Uh, so I can have peace because I remember what you did. Uh, but not only do I remember what you did, but I hear what you're saying. Oh God help me. <laughs> How do I have constant peace? I remember what you did, but I hear what you're saying. So to have constant peace. You got to remember what he did. Come on. And you got to hear what he said. All right, y'all got it so far. Uh, the person in the back said, I don't know, Pastor. You got to remember what he did. Mm -hmm. And you got to hear what he said. So God will speak to his people peace. Oh, that's right there in the text. I'm right there in the text. I told you I'm a suppository preacher. I'm right there in the text. Uh, God's word is given to the prophet. He says, for those who are faithful, Mm. For those who turn their hearts toward him, God's salvation is nearer to those who fear him for the purpose of glory to dwell in the land. Mm. So God's salvation is near. It's close. His saving power, uh, his redeeming qualities, his, his redemptive nature is, is close to you. Uh, when you fear him, not fear like I'm afraid, but fear and wonder and in awe when you reverence his name, understanding his power. And, and, and you know, he says it's good. And it's only there for the purpose of the glory being in the land. So he's saying, listen, uh, I will give you the peace. This is what I want to say to you. I will speak peace in your life. When you attune yourself to give me the glory. When you're close to me. When you're faithful to me. When you're not all sometimes. But when you're faithful. When you turn your heart. Oh man I'll tell you what. When I start. When I put my feet and my mind on doing God's work. God says alright I'm going to speak peace in your life. Everything could be going crazy. I'm going to speak peace in your life. So God speaks a peace. A shalom. That's what it's called in Hebrew. Wholeness. He speaks wholeness. His peace is everything that you need to be content, happy, and whole in fullness where you will never again desire to return to the foolishness of sin and fall away from God. I ain't going back. And I ain't going to let people take me back. And I put the devil on notice right now, wherever the devil is. The devil sometimes, you know, the devil, he's in heavenly places. The devil likes to run around and he likes to attack people who believe in Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going back there. Uh, and, and, but see, what happens is that when you get close to God, God will start revealing his glory among you. And God's glory will just shine among wherever you walk. Uh, it's near. It's coming. And his glory will be in the land because we're bearing his glory. Woo! And his glory will be wherever you are. When you walk inside your job, you, when you go into the supermarket, when you get behind the wheel, uh, when you go to the doctor, his glory will be upon you. You won't be able to see it, but others will see it because now you are close to him and he's close to you. Uh, and God gives you this, this gift because peace is a gift from God. You don't deserve it. You don't earn it. It's a gift that God, read your Bibles, it's a gift from God. And God gives you this gift by speaking peace. But not only does he speak peace in our ears, 
But God gives us a walking peace, a talking peace, a living in peace in the person of Jesus Christ. Ooh, God help me, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> Jesus was the manifestation of peace. So let me not go too fast, too far. Uh, but, but watch this. So to have constant peace, I got to remember what he did. I got to hear what he's saying. But I also got to see what you are doing. I got to see what he's doing. Uh, so I got to see what he's doing. So I, I found that in, in the bridge of this text, uh, it breaks off. So he goes through this and then it breaks into a poem. And it says, love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss. Uh, so he, he, he says, first, I see love. I see what you're doing. I, you're bringing me love in my life. Then he goes on and he says, faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. In other words, I don't only see love, but now I see blessings. <laughs> I'm breaking this up. I, I see love and now I see blessings. And then look what the text says. The text says that the Lord gives from heaven what is good. But watch this. The land gives from the earth what is good. So before the Lord comes, righteousness will lead the way and make a path for him to come. There is someone coming who will bring peace, peace on earth. And God commands us to seek peace. Why does he do that? Because if you seek peace, you're seeking Jesus. And if you're seeking Jesus, Jesus will come and he'll reward you by his presence. Uh, I like the ball. So I see, I get love. I see what you're doing. You're bringing me love. You're bringing me blessings. And God, you're going to pour down from heaven what you got. And then you're going to bring up resources from the earth to bless me while I'm here. God have mercy. Y'all don't like this type of preaching. Uh, but when we seek peace, we seek him. And when we seek him, we see him. All right, y'all. Uh, when we seek him, we get to see him. Oh, God help me, Jesus. Here. All right, I'm about to be done. Because uh, some of y'all are looking at me crazy. Uh, so, a, a story. A story is told about a father who wanted to give his daughter something to do while they waited in the doctor's office for their appointment. So the father, uh, while talking to the front desk receptionist, noticed uh, the jewelry of, of the receptionist and a small little hidden cross around her neck and figured she must be nice. So he asked her if she had anything to help occupy his daughter's mind. So she looked around, looked in the drawers, and, uh, on the shelves and to no avail she found she could not find anything and at the last point of desperation she looks into her carrying bag and she found uh, her son's activity book uh, she tore out one of the perforated pages and handed it to the father said see if this will help uh, the page contained a picture of the world on the sheet of paper so the father, he took it and he tore it into little pieces and, and, and uh, he provided some tape and, uh, that was given to him by the receptionist. So he told her if, if she could put the pieces back together correctly. Uh, so the little girl, excited about the challenge, uh, jumped for joy, happy to oblige. I would love to try to put this world together. I would love to try to put these pieces together. Uh, so five minutes go by, and she blurted out in the entire doctor's office in the waiting area. She said, uh, Daddy, I'm done. I'm finished. This was fun. I'm done. Uh, so she, uh, she lifted up the tape papers and showed her father the pieces uh, that were put back together perfectly. Uh, and he was stupefied. He could not understand how, how she did it. So when he asked her, uh, how, how did she get the task done so quickly? She said, oh, daddy, you didn't understand. Look, on the back of the page was a picture of Jesus. And I figured that if I got him right, the world will fall into place. Oh, God, I, I don't know who I'm blessing right now. So I, I, and, and our worlds are in chaos because we aren't focused on getting Jesus right in our eyes. But as we wait for Jesus to come in this Advent season, if we get him right, he'll give us peace, joy, and fulfillment. Oh, God, we praise your name. We thank you this morning because I remember what you did. I hear what you're saying, and I see what you're doing so I can have constant peace. Oh, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'll see you later on. Hey.